Okay, so we'll uh, resume from where we left. So we can see that uh, we were considering the delta learning group as an example to understand the uh, various parameters associated with the convolutional neural network. And uh, we, our intention now is to understand the whole concept of weight update by looking at various schemes. Out of these schemes, the names we already have come across maybe several times in the previous lectures, but we uh, never went inside to understand what exactly is happening. Okay, so our idea now is to understand them in detail. So the first thing is uh, the SGD, which is nothing but the stochastic gradient descent. So why the why it is called as a stochastic and what the descent stands for? Okay. We are going to see that now. Okay, so consider the stochastic gradient descent. Now, it, it's, it's the most simplest method actually, right? I give one training data at a time for the machine to learn. What machine performs, in a sense, talking of, strictly talking about the neural networks, it takes an input, right? Multiplies that with the weight. Maybe if there is a bias, it adds a bias. Gets an output takes an activation function uh, on that and provides an output. So that output is compared with the desired value or a target value. If it matches, no problem, right? No need to update the weight. If it is not, uh, if there is an error, right? If the output is not matching with the desired, right? Apply a learning rule. Again, under this condition, the learning rule which we are using is the uh, delta. So you calculate the delta, alpha into delta into the error, or uh, not error, it's x value, alpha into delta into x value, x is the input, right, will give you the change in the weight required, right, so that delta w, you apply to the old value w, right, to get a new value, this is what is the, in, in, in general, this is how the weight updation happens, okay, now the stochastic gradient descent is a technique, which calculates the error every time you train, right? So the schemes are like this. You don't have to calculate the ever error every time, right? There is no rule saying that every time you train, every time you calculate error and every time you update, this is not required. So, but since the stochastic gradient descent is the most basic and the oldest technique of learning, right? Making the machine to learn, right? You can see there is a tag, right? I have so many uh, data, training data. So every I, I give the data in what fashion? I I'll give the data one by one. So whenever I am giving the data one by one, every time you give the data, you update the weight, calculate the error, and update the weight by doing the training. So fundamentally, the training happens. Every time you give the data, this is pretty simple, actually, right? Nothing but other, other. So equations we already have, right? What is the equation for weight update? Wij is equal to Wij plus, right? Delta W. So that is there. We cannot change because that comes from the specific learning. But then what is this stochastic gradient descent? That complicated term like stochastic gradient descent, right? What is that? Now, understand that Training happens every time I give the data. Every time I, this is what we have understood so far. Right? We never knew that, okay, we can even change that, right? Training, it's not necessary that like, I should train the machine every time I give an input. What are the other options? We'll see later, okay? Batch and uh, mini batch, etc. there, right? We'll see the differences in it. But now you understand that this is the simplest one, what we were already doing, right? That itself is the SGD technique, right? Now, in such case, why is such a complicated name given over there, right? You see, stochastic actually comes from the statistical part. Whenever there is a, uh, so you are conducting an experiment and if the results of that experiment is, um, if anything can happen, right? you may get, you may win, you may lose something like that. So, right, that kind of randomness is there. Weights may increase, weights may decrease randomly depending upon what is your current input. So you can see here, 
I'm talking about this particular equation specifically. So you see here, right? Change in the rate is equal to alpha, right? Learning rate. Delta value. Delta value is how we calculate differentiation of the activation function into the error. Right? Now you see the error can be positive or negative when you subtract, right? The desired value minus your target value. When you subtract, you it may be positive, it may be negative, right? There is there is a lot of things that can happen. It can take any value. Stochastically speaking, right? It can be right a random thing. So again, this input data, right? That also depends on actually matters why we calculate the change in the rates. So because of all such parameters, there is a lot of randomness present over there. That's why the word stochastic comes in the picture. Right. Gradient descent talks about right how the weight comes to the minimum. Right? Our ultimate goal here is to minimize the weight. Uh, not the weight, sorry, minimize the error. So this error should be minimum means there should be no weight of it. So this delta w should be minimized. So error reduces, delta reduces, delta reduces, this delta w i reduces, correct? So that means the weight update, right, is not necessary. So ultimately, the de decrease, right, decrease in the error value is ultimately. So you, as, as per the definition which we have used now, if you are using train, 100 training data, right, I have to update the weight for each and every input I give. For every input, calculate the y, calculate the error, right? If there is error, update. If there is no error, don't update. This thing should, this, if you are trying to write this in a loop, loop should run, show me that. Okay, pretty simple definition. I think things are very clear to you, right? So I would like to know if there is any doubt uh, in this concept, only the SGD part, okay? Please let me know if you have any doubt. Otherwise, I'll proceed further. All right, then I would like to move further. So this is the batch method, right? So the batch method, uh, like instead of giving an input, training and observing the output and updating the weights for every input, right? You wait until the complete data set is given once. I have, say, Maybe I'll, I'll go for a simple example. I have 10 data. Okay. In a class, I have 10 uh, different data. Right. For every input, I don't have. I wait for the All the 10 data should be given to the machine. I'll try to save the answers the machine gives every time. It can be right answer, wrong answer, doesn't matter. Or you can also save the errors because instead of, sto instead of storing the exact values you can store the errors okay and at the end of all that data set training is over to do something related to that maybe you can take the average of the error to decide whether weight should be increased decreased or something like that use that as your error value calculate the delta value from that use that delta value to calculate delta w to change in the weight and use that further for the data question. this is you see Calculations are less. You don't have to do all the calculation. This still works. I'm going to justify both cases. We we are going to write this code from scratch for SGD as well as this technique. And I'm also going to make a comparison ultimately at the end. Okay. So let's see that. I'll try to give a, a diagram as well so that we can refer to this just to remember what exactly each of them are doing. Right. So this look at this. So this is a batch process, right? So weight updation or the updation happens, right? For one complete set of training data. Right? Now there is a question, okay, if at all after all the 10 I train and if the training is not uh, enough, what do you do, right? So in such case, we have what is called as repeat the whole training data set once again. We call it as an epoch. I'm going to use the word, uh, I'm going to bring the word at a later date. But since definitely few of you may have that question, right? So that's why I'm trying to answer that now. So since you are not training at every instant, right? Every instant of the train, uh, input data, you will do that all at once. So now 
you let's say right you do a validation as well you find that okay machine has not learned then what is the solution you give the whole data set once again right and at the end of that you do it so data set may be same normally we shuffle in the when i give it for the second time right i will not give the data set in the same order i will shuffle them so that there is a, a some kind of right uh, you, you try to make it random randomly you shuffle them so that machine learns something Right. So this has been a proved method. So whenever you have a huge amount of data set, every time you should not make the machine to learn. Weight updation every time means it's going to take a lot of time. So right, you will try to reduce the number of calculations or weight update. Right. Okay. So that's what is going to happen here. Right. This is the whole data set. Right. As I just mentioned, give everything as your input. Right. And at the end, take the average of the error possibly right to use that as the parameter to update the weights okay so that is the second scheme which we are talking about so the equations is, uh, I, you can see an equation over here right it see there is a one by n where capital n is the number of the number of uh, the samples present in the data set right so every time you may calculate so there is a, there are various uh, approaches even inside this class. I'll tell the alternative option. Maybe we'll use that for the coding as well. So instead of calculating the error, right, and keep it saving the error every time, every time you calculate what's the weight that needs to be updated. Okay. Weight change in weight you calculate, but don't update the weight. Calculate delta w1, delta w2, delta w3, dot 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 to delta w n. N samples are given, n times I calculate the D spot. Okay, delta. At the end, use this particular equation which we are going, which we see here. It says that calculate the delta W values, right? Every time, take a sum of them, sum divided by the total number is nothing but L. So I, whatever is the weight update that is supposed to happen every time, I don't do that. I save them somewhere and I keep adding them. And at the end, I divide by the total number of samples I use so that I get an average weight. So that's what has been shown over here. So, right, both, both the methods we discussed are approximately going to generate the same uh, this thing, right? One of them will do now, other one you can take it as a homework and you can try to write that particular code by yourself, all right? Okay. And uh, then I'll move further, uh, I'll move ahead to. The next concept that we discussed so far is called as a mini batch. Okay. So you see, this is a mini batch concept. All right. Here, you will further divide, right? You will, you will not, you, the, the average of weight will be taken for a particular number of train, right? In this case, you can see we may have 10 individual data sets for a class but i want to apply the batch method only but i don't i don't want to wait for all the data set to be completed during the training process so what you can do you can see that we will pick and like maybe every three inputs right we try to take an average and we update you don't have to wait for the complete process this is the difference you Call that size as the mini batch size. All right. So total data set is ten. I update the weights every three. Uh, you you can call it as the iteration actually, right? Because three data will three individual data will go, right? Get a weight, accumulate the weight, take the average, and update. Next three once again. After that, another three will come once again, like that. Right. So this approach, if you use, then that is what is mini batch right nowadays right mini batch is also you uh, being used to wide okay fine but the difference is just like that first technique sgd individually every time you update second thing take the whole data set at once keep calculating the weights update update for the value that needs to be updated but you don't update for them until and unless you finish the whole data set take the average of that weight value and update okay so the third option is mini batch wherein uh, what we do we 
pick a number, right, which is smaller than the data set size. Data set size is 10, I pick 3, 4, 5, whatever. Okay, so after that many training samples, right, I update the weight by taking the average of only those uh, weights to be updated. Okay, so that's the fundamental uh, uh, difference. All right, okay, now I'll try to define the very important word which is called as the epoch. Right, as we know now, uh, the epoch is defined as the number of training cycles of the neural network, right? Number of training cycles. In a sense, once you give the complete data set to a machine for learning, that says it is one epoch. All right, so the number of epochs, right, are going to be, right, uh, you can define the epochs that's going to take place depending upon how you are trying to be, what scheme you are going to follow. All right, but anyway, so that discussion will keep for some other day. Let me directly show you one particular diagram which uh, talks about the whole, the complete thing which we are supposed to discuss, right? So this is the one. You see that training data is there, right? I give the complete data set. How do you update the uh, weight? Doesn't matter. You update part by part, single every every time, like SGD or a batch or mini batch. Doesn't matter. Once the complete data set is over, you call that as one. So that's the ultimate thing, right? We will uh, define the epochs, right? Uh, for the same purpose when we write the codes. Okay. So uh, now we'll move on to the example part where we are going to uh, write the codes. All right. Let me. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir. Excuse me, sir. Yes, please. Uh, sir, what what is the concept of learning rate? I mean, how to decide the learning rate? Okay. Generally, we consider point zero one uh, in our programs. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, see, the learning rate has uh, it's it's something like how quickly you want the machine to learn. Okay. So that's the idea, right? And the uh, it. it in my uh, experience, it depends on the data set, okay? If the data set is easier, smaller data set, like, like the one which we are going to use now. See, I'm not going to keep that uh, value closer to 0 0.01 or 0 0.1 because if that is the case, though my data set is very simple, right? It's going to take a lot of time. I don't want that because my, I, I'm very sure that my data, is, data set is very simple. In such cases, you can give even the larger one like point, more than 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, even 0 0.9. I'll show you that. Okay, that's one thing. So depends on, you You will be able to decide that based on the idea you have on the data set. Simple data set, right? The one which we are going to use now is such example. I'll show you, right? We'll keep higher value of alpha and still machine learns. Okay, when you have a huge data set, varieties of data present inside that and the number of data you have is too huge, Right, and maybe the parameters machine has to learn are many. Okay, in such case, you need to give time for machine to learn so that you need more and more epochs, right? More and more learning. That means learning rate should be kept as small as possible, like 0 0.1, 0 0.05, will for that. Okay, but that means you, you should be ready for longer duration of training, right? Maybe the epochs should be uh, maybe one lakh. Okay, with huge data set, not, not a small data set. So even when I am given to use the smaller data set now, maybe I'll use a epochs uh, or the number of times the loop is going to run. Maybe I'll keep it as 5,000, 10,000, whatever. Okay, but you see, when the data set is huge and there is a lot of variety, variety means there is a lot of parameters to be learned by the machine. You have to give time so that you don't expect machine to learn quickly. Don't keep that value higher, you keep it smaller. But Fundamentally, this is what I'm telling from my experience, okay? Various projects, when, when I did, I could learn this. But the point is that there is no fixed rule saying that, okay, you have to keep only this value, right? But as I mentioned, uh, I could observe that, right? Data set is simple. You give alpha as normally, as you mentioned, you, you may say that, okay, there is a rule saying that we, keep, we should keep it as small as possible. Yes, that is going to work. For a simpler data set also, you keep alpha smaller, it takes more time, right? But machine can learn it quickly because data set is simple. You may have to give more iterations, that's fine. Keep alpha as 0.7, right? Give 10,000 iterations. It will do, it will do that job and learning will be very quick. 
okay so there is a small part of trial and error as well right only from uh, practice this comes into picture but since you asked the question i try to answer okay sir and this learning rate is fixed i mean yeah. throughout for, the for, entire process yes, for, for a process algorithm when you write an algorithm right you keep this alpha fixed so when you when it runs right you normally this is fixed but now it is what happens i'll tell you so we have okay. some of the functions in built maybe inside the tensor flow inside the keras etc where you can actually specify you learn something machine learn something you can specify at what point of time after i let's say i define one one lakh equation right my loop runs one one lakh second i can say that okay after 50000 change the learning rate by this much right you may reduce you may increase depends on your requirement that is also there but it i cannot keep changing continuously at a point i can do all right so after so many iterations changes once you can do two in in your whole process this is enough okay so some functions are there where we can use right so okay sir okay right? so that feature is also there right okay any any other question all right so let 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 me uh, try to define a problem now and we'll try to answer that one okay so the problem that i'm going to define now is uh, first we'll try to solve a simple classification problem it's a binary data only and uh, let me show you that okay so this is my problem right i have a training data now previously we discussed that if it is a uh, if, if if it is a supervised learning i i prefer writing it in the specific format i have a data set and a class so you can see that the training data set we have three four data very simple system. maybe this, this looks like a gate itself some logical gate we are trying to invoke okay maybe fine now you see the first three points right in that particular data set format first three are the actual data right and the last one is the class class is actually if you see it's it's like it's a ticker it's a bold letter so first two data 001 and 011 they belong to class 0 okay and 101 and 111 they belong to class 1 right so now uh, my intention is not to go for a complex algorithm and uh, do the programming by using some built in functions no okay so that's not my approach here i want you to know what exactly this sgd perform inside right i can call a inbuilt function which does this job in in a, in a fraction of time and i'll get answer that that's not a case right so in order to understand right i i don't want to go for more layers so i'm not directly discussing the deep learning related topic here let's keep it simple let's keep it a Uh, single view first so the, in this case you see how many inputs are there first three bits are the inputs right so i uses sorry i'm going to use three input neurons okay there is one neuron that itself is going to provide the output because i have only binary classification maybe this y can be one or zero depending on that i can classify so there are three ways to be used right so fundamentally so far whatever we discussed right i'm trying to write the same equations over here so no change in the equation because i'm still going to stick to the uh, delta learning rule itself so equations corresponding to delta learning rule you can see over here all right okay so uh, we need to define something activation function what you are going to use let's fix that so already we discussed sigmoid i'll keep the sigmoid this particular layer output layer is going to uh, activate its value depending upon the sigma all right so the architecture is uh, fine right it's very simple right so once we know how to write a code for this from scratch right we understand that okay this is what is going to happen so i can jump into the i can see what built in function can do the same job and how to do that it's fine various parameters present inside that standard function or built in function we will never understand if we don't go to this level Okay, when we learn things, initially we need to go from scratch. Later on, we can directly jump onto the okay advanced topics. Okay, so that's that's my objective. So first, let me define <coughs> the activation function itself. So I'll uh, define the uh, okay. I'll call it as a my 
my sigmoid function, all right, I'll pass a variable x to that, right? And uh, maybe I just have to return a value, return simply one divided by, if you look at the equation, I'm simply trying to uh, write the same thing here, one plus x, uh, okay, so exp does not exist directly, I should write np dot equals, right? Okay, np dot exp, of uh, minus x. All right, so let me end this and go to the next session. And uh, now, uh, my objective is that I simply want to write a function, right, that takes the weight. Uh, it it should also take the input and the desired values. Three values it should take, because in order to uh, do the weight operation right using a specific method these are the three fundamental uh, parameters that needs to be passed to the machine so neural network design happens over here now in this part of the code okay again i'll define this as a function okay because i'm going to call this again and again right if i <coughs> sorry if i want to iterate thousand times that means thousand times you are calling this function so writing a function itself is the easiest way all right so define uh, let me call this as I'm using the delta rule, right? But the weight updation happens according to, a, according to a scheme. Let's call that scheme as SG, right? So the name will suggest you. When you read this, you understand. Okay, so I'm using the delta learning rule for weight updation, but the scheme I choose is SG. I, I'm not using batch or anything. Okay, so just now we mentioned it has to take three inputs, all right? So first one I'll call it as a weight vector denoted by w and uh, say input i'll call that x and i have a desired value as well okay so these are the uh, three things i am going to use as input all right now you see this is the point uh, where i mentioned that alpha can be kept higher to towards the higher side as well see this data set is pretty thin right only like two classes only four data there is nothing in the sense, no complicated pattern to be recognized by the machine. Okay, some very simple case is this. So, when you go for that, I can define the alpha equal to. Now, you see, I'll try to keep larger value. Let's see, I have not tried with 0 0.9, but right, I already told you that this is a simple case. So, even if you keep a higher value, it will, it should work. That's what I told, right? So, I'll try to justify that. Okay, I'll keep it at 0 0.9. Let's check what's going to happen. Okay, and uh, I'll use a uh, number n just to say that this n holds the number of uh, classes in that data. Okay, in, in this particular uh, code, we expect that. Otherwise, definitely, uh, number of, we can, we can see the x, capital X, and we can see inside how many uh, rows you have, you can extract from there. Okay, I don't want to go to that level because I'm very confirmed, I'm confirmed with the concept that I have only four uh, data. Okay, four data. So I'll keep this n equal to four. <clears throat> All right. So I think I have the uh, data required for this. Now I can actually, for all such four uh, different data points that are given as input, I should do something. For all the four, what do you do? Right. Calculate the output. Right. Give this as input. Multiply by weights. Right. If you, you have a bias, add a bias. Calculate a partial output. Right. That partial output, you give it to the activation function, get an output, take a difference, right, with the desired value. And if there is a error, apply the delta learning rule and update. This is the whole concept, right? So now for all the those four data points, I should do this. So that means I am very confirmed that I have to do this job four times. So go for a four loop. If you are not confirmed, if you don't have a confirmation about how many times you should repeat this loop, right, then a while loop is suitable okay so since i am very sure that i have to go for this loop four times i'll go with for say i in a range uh how many times its range is n itself right because four is the range zero one two three five all right so right so for this range now you see the capital x right as you assume i'm completely passing the data set to the machine right Complete data set in the sense you can see over here, right? This is my whole data set. It's a matrix, uh, four rows, four columns, 
first or maybe i'll let's say i'll bifurcate my x is only three columns because the last column is the class so that is the desired data right i'll give it separately let's say so right so my capital x consists of the three columns and quotes out of which when i try to give an input for the first time right or input for each row it's only one row correct that is one input this is the output. next row next row desired output like that so i should pass only a specific row so what i do i'll extract so this is my objective now i'll call it as a small x. small x is equal to capital x of right take the k through because k starts is it k or something my mistake sorry i didn't see it's i right okay sorry it's i right x of i comma all columns i is zero right so i zero means zero row will be taken all the columns that is your input for the time being so that's that's what is the meaning of this i hope this is clear right then i also have to take only one value from my desired matrix what is the desired matrix it's the last column or the bold values again i'm going to put them as a completely single matrix out of which i should take one by one right so that that's what i'm going to do now so let me write that as the desired value individual desired value small d. so capital d is my complete matrix so from the complete matrix you pick up only the ith element okay zero means d of zero d of one d of two d of three so when you have a single value whether it is row wise or column wise machine understand zeroth element is the first element right next element is always d of one okay whether you write in a row or column Okay, so that, that that's why i am still able to write d of i itself for this okay now x is there d is there right so i already have a weight with me right can i get the weight into x done right it, it can be done right so let me try to call that product okay as a value v okay so v is equal to i'm going to use a np dot matmal function this is because only when the matrix sizes do match number of elements in w and number of elements in x they match you can multiply okay it's a row matrix versus a column matrix to get a single answer so matmul <coughs> np dot matmul w comma small x so you see w will have right so many uh, elements right you can see the okay the, w is not defined yet but definitely this has to be matched okay only when this is match we get that all right so any any changes here will will when, when once we run the actual code we'll be able to understand right if there is any mistake now we are thinking about what we are supposed to do and we are writing the code okay so uh, i got a v this is a partial output you have a partial value which is w into x summation of w to x is done here right after that you should pass this to the activation function to get a so i'll call that as y okay so y is equal to uh, we wrote a function simply call it okay my my sigmoid of this v i got a value v partial output pass it through the sigmoid function you get an output okay so we have a y with this so referring to our uh, diagram which we had written here you see i got a y now right compare it with the d to get an error use that error to update that that's the whole process right okay so we are still under the for loop only so our next objective is to do this right i'll call error as e is equal to desired minus this y okay d is already there we have a d with us from that i will subtract y. okay now go to the delta value uh, okay just now i wrote here right so first objective is to calculate this delta value this delta is nothing but right uh, we have the value right uh, that is phi of v right phi of v is nothing but that activation functions output which is y itself y is equal to phi of v right so i don't have to write a phi of v once again i can simply call it as y y into 1 minus y into the error all right so that that's what i'm going to write next so let me call that as a delta Right, so delta is equal to y into 
1 minus y because phi of v into 1 minus phi of v. Phi of v itself is y, all right? So multiply that with the e. Okay, so this is going to be a single point. It's 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 something like a scalar. Only one value. You get. All right. So that's the delta term. Use this delta term to calculate this delta w, right? Which is alpha into delta into x j. So how to how should I write that? I can simply write. Uh, let me give a notation. So d w. All right. So d w is equal to alpha. Okay multiplied by the delta we calculated and uh, multiply that with the input okay so you see x comes over there x is nothing but the input so currently whatever input you had given for which machine didn't learn properly machine made an error right that input also should be considered for the weight that's why the delta rule takes care of the input as well okay so i got this Next is nothing but simply do this. That is, uh, weight is equal to uh, weight plus equal to weight is equal to weight plus that dw. So, all right. So that for loop runs how many times? Four times for all the inputs. This will run. Okay. And once that is finished, I can now return. What is the learned values? It's a weight only. I don't want anything else to be returned. So simply return w. Okay, so <clears throat> try to write a very simple and a compact code that actually implements everything that is present in those three equations, right? Which we see on the screen. Okay, is there any doubt? Uh, I can act here if uh, there is any doubt over here. Please let me know. Meanwhile, I'll try to run this. Okay, as of now it says no error, but only when the value goes in, right? If there is an, any error, we'll come to it. Okay, as of now, always it says there will be no error, okay? uh, unless and until we have some uh, errors related to the typing or any functions which we have misplaced. Other than that, normally we don't get any error over here, but that doesn't mean that the code is right. right? Okay, let me go ahead and uh, let, let's try to give the values. All right, so all the values which we had shown here, right? I have to enter them. Okay, so I'll enter two matrices, one for the actual data, the, the first three values four times, and one more matrix that takes the column. All right, the last column as well. Okay, so let me define this. Capital X is equal to NP dot, I'll define this as an NP array because it's going to be a multi-dimensional so uh, row wise I'll, i prefer entering this to data set is 0 comma 0 comma uh, 1 okay and the second uh, data is 0 uh, comma 1 1 and the next data is 1 comma 0 comma 1 Last one is one comma one comma one. Okay, that's the <coughs> x. I'll also define my desired values. All right, so desired value is equal to np dot. It's also going to be an np array only. Okay, but I'll try to make it a one-dimensional case. Right, uh, I'll write row wise and take a transpose so that it becomes a vertical. All right, so that can be also be done, or you can even enter column, uh, sorry, uh, row ones. Uh, I, I think this is the easiest one, right? Zero. First two classes were zero, zero. Next two classes were one, one. But this makes a row, row wise. I'll try to make it uh, take a transpose. Okay, so that will do the job. You see, other than this, if you look at the, uh, the, the preliminary requirements of uh, the training of training a neural network i need to define the, initialize the weights also right? so what i what you can do you can give three numbers you enter right but if you try to make it uh, random that's more effective all right so i'll try to do that so since we already have the np numpy already present in the system right uh, which is already loaded to the memory i prefer using maybe np dot 
random rand so i create random numbers how many three i need so one rows maybe three columns i'll i'll try to make it more uh, random maybe by just uh, only this is sufficient but i, I have it. I, I normally whenever i write code i try to make it something more uh, random I, i try to bring something some more randomness into picture by just doing something like this okay uh, three times that random numbers minus two right or 1.5 times a random number minus something you can you can do something like that, that that's a another way this is like randomness into some some more randomness three times that number is more randomness and minus two is also a different way that, okay so it's something like that okay it's 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 left to you you can do uh, whatever you prefer all right so this is the initial rate i want to see what is my initial rate and after training i also want to observe that my rates are changed okay so for that purpose what i'm going to do i'll write i'll do a print here i'll do a print statement okay so print initial uh, initial rates all right equal to let me uh, do a plus here and string the values of the w okay so uh, this means uh, we will be able to visualize we should be able to visualize the weights which uh, with which it initializes right i am expecting positive and well, as well as negative numbers right because the rand function will create in that order okay so that's one thing i define that now i i have everything ready to call this particular function you see i can call a function w if you have w x and d with you right i have both right you can see here x is defined d is defined as well as the w is defined right i can call it now so you decide how many times you want to give that four numbers right four rows of your data set how many times you want to do what do you call it it's epoch right so let's do that so for it's left to me right i can decide right you you, you can start with a, a moderate number right irrespective of the complexity of the problem right i prefer anywhere around 5000 because 5000 iterations for this small data set is nothing for our machines okay our cpus will do it very quickly right maybe 2 3 seconds maximum within that 5 to 10000 iterations will be done so it's not a com computation burden for these kind of machines right plus if you are using gpu then definitely go for 50000 no problem right quickly it will do right so for for epoch equal to <clears throat> oh, not in equal sorry my mistake epoch in the range i'll keep say let's do a trial and error if machine i'm sure machine will learn for this number but if at all it will not learn because i kept the alpha high right maybe that is also a, a factor over here if at all it does not learn i'll make it 20000 okay so let let me let me see what's going to happen so for epoch in range this number so updated weight is w w is equal to call the function uh what was the name okay, I missed. delta sgd okay i think it should suggest yes delta sgd call the pass the parameters in the same order we first should pass the w then x then d since we are giving the same name no confusion w x d i'll pass it so this means ten thousand times the four data whatever we have will be passed to machine and machine will learn okay fine that is done let's say this works fine uh, without any error in the previous cell if that runs now you see i have to perform what is called the testing right so training is over weight gets updated testing in the sense i should give these four data once again to the same machine with the updated weights and result should match my d vector which is the desired right? that's the ultimate thing so training is over we already have written the function so it will take care of the whole training so now in this part do we have n no we don't have n so i'll define n here n equal to say 4 okay and i'll say that my output comes to store the output i'll i create this okay uh, then for i in the range right uh, range n itself okay in the range n right so 0 1 2 3 so four times my data sets will go 
to do this. Take out again x is there. Take one by one x from that. So x equal to so some part of the code will be repeated here. Okay, because our objective still remains same. Okay, uh, this of uh, say i comma all the columns. I'll take it. And, uh, okay, let me just see. Then once I have this x with me, I can multiply that x with the updated weights to get a partial output. So v will be the next step. Okay, so v is equal to np dot matmul. Right. So multiply the weight. Now you see this w is nothing but it's an updated weight. That's what I'm expecting. W comma x. All right. So I got this and uh, my y is equal to uh, every time I get a y, uh, every y I'll concatenate with the empty list which I have created earlier. So I should use np dot. Uh, I think I can use uh, concatenate. I guess yeah, it's there. Concatenate. Uh, take your past value of y. With that, uh, activated value of v should be added to this uh, y, right? So I can I can call it as a maybe my my sigmoid of v. So v will go to the sigmoid function. Some value uh, some value it will give. That value I'm concatenating with the y. So it's by default it will do a vertical concatenate. So, if any any doubt you have, you refer the uh, concatenate functions help. All right. So you you'll come to know. Default is vertical cat concatenation. So y is there. New value get below that. So next value will come below that. So I get a final column matrix. This is what I'm expecting. Let's see. All right. So I think this should run for four times. And once it is done, I can I should be able to print the one. Uh, okay, let's quickly go through the code once again just to make sure that we are fine with that. Okay, so first part what you are doing, okay, you are defining alpha n the range, okay, x then d, v is equal to multiplication, y is equal to sigma, calculate error, delta, okay, from the delta calculate dw, from the dw update the weight. So this is going to happen four times, right? Uh, inside this function and I'm calling that function 10,000 times. Okay, I, it looks like others are fine for me. Right? Let me quickly run through this. Oh, it's running. Good. Okay, okay. I, I never, uh, I, I wanted one more thing here. Okay, so let me, let me just print this as well. Right, so this were the initial weight. At least I want to also see the uh, updated weights. All right, let let me run this again. Okay, you can see that weight updation happens, right? Initial values of weights are 0 0.47 randomly picked up, right? Positive as well as negative numbers picked up after the thousand iterations, ten thousand, ten thousand, my mistake, ten thousand iterations. You can see that weights are updated in this fashion. And important thing is, what is this? You see, you are printing your classified output. So let's quickly go back and see, right, what were the expected outputs. Expected outputs were 0, 0, 1, 1. Because we are giving the inputs in the same order for a testing purpose. So I am expecting outputs 0, 0 saying that class 0, class 0, 1, 1. You see, it's a sigma in continuous function. So you get real values as an output. Okay, so you see, first value is 0 0.01. Close to zero. Second value 0 0.008. Close to zero. Third value is expected one. You get 0 0.9932. And the last value is also 0 0.9916. So pretty much close. You can use another function to truncate this, right? Like R int, which will make an uh, approx appropriate approximation to the nearest integer, right? R int you can use or seal or whatever, right? You you can think of that and you can say if you want exact answers like 0011, but I'm I'm fine with this. Right? So <clears throat> thing to remember from this is that this is the normal and the most simple way of right learning how the weight updation happens using a specific algorithm. Right? In this case, it's a delta learning rule. So you can see that right, the delta learning rule has two, three equations, two runs. So I should write the code corresponding to that. That's what 
happens in this right so all the three equations we can see here have been implemented over here right? it's pretty straightforward really, right even when i write a code by myself right sometimes the mistakes will happen my equation will be fine okay i'm using the equation in a very proper way but what i observe is that matrix dimensions do not match so one important thing that i observed here is in it's it was my mistake but maybe uh, uh, maybe to the previous batch or before that right so i didn't take this transpose because matrix was kept like this i couldn't multiply so it was giving an error when you actually multiply inside this you see you call the np dot matmul here right that's one thing possible right i just have to trace back because inside this if somebody throws an error it is too hard to identify what exactly is happening because none of these variables sorry, because none of these variables are available for us outside the function so it becomes difficult to uh, trace it out this is what is a feedback that i give you all right when you write a code like this right so I, I think this is pretty straightforward, uh, but still, if you have any doubt, please let me know. I'll try to clear that uh, now itself before we go ahead. Any doubt? All right. Let's, let's proceed further. So uh, the next thing that I want to discuss here is an example that is corresponding to, okay, I'll write like this. Programming example for the back method. All right, so directly we'll start. We have, we, uh, we directly, I think we, we have the sigmoid function already defined, so I don't want to start from there. I want to start from here, okay? This is what is my objective now. I want to write a function that implements the batch method. So try to recall what is batch, I'll show you, right? So you have to wait until the complete data set is used for training once. So once it is done, every time you might have calculated the delta that you use, keep accumulating them in a variable, keep keep on adding them. Once, so in, in our case, we have only four uh, samples in our data. So wait until all the four of them have been used for training. Every time you uh, use for a training and calculate the output, right, you keep track of what is the delta that you use, but don't use it for training, I keep accumulating them. Once all the four over, Right, take an average and use that average for the updation, the weight. Pretty simple, right? Okay, we are going to use that. All right, so let me call, uh, okay, let's define a function. All right, so define, uh, it's uh, the same delta learning rule, but the scheme I'm going to use is a batch. All right, so delta learning rule using a batch technique, I should be able to. Uh, get the values for uh, w then i should be able to get for x and t right so these are the three parameters i'm going to pass all right so yeah uh, so actually you see i this this particular uh, code worked with the point nine right so i just wanted to talk about that uh, sorry i missed that other time so the concept is like that so data set is very simple right and uh, even though you have the number of iterations like uh, 10,000 and all, or right, this higher value still works, okay? But if at all I say that my data set is a complicated image data set, right? I want to classify say four or five objects or handwriting, handwriting recognition like zero to nine letters I write. My image size is uh, say 1,000 into 1,000, right? It's a, it's a complicated data set. Then this point nine will not work, right? Even if you give 5 lakh, 10 lakh iterations, right, you call it, it will not, not, right? So you have to reduce that because there are a lot, so many things to learn, okay? So you will, you will be, uh, you will get adjusted to this. You will be uh, able to guess this when you do a lot of coding, okay? So, fine. Uh, okay, so uh, we came to here. Now, now my objective is to start with alpha. So I, I just remember that I, I should talk about the alpha value. So alpha, right? Again, this is the same problem. So I still want to go with the same number. Let's see what happens. All right. 
So now, uh, in this case, my appro approach should be different because I have to hold the sum of the DWL. Okay, so I'll call that as DW uh, maybe sum. All right. So I have DWs coming for three different weights. First weight will get its own DW. Second one, its own DW. Third is another DW. That should be taken for sum. Okay, so what we can do, uh, we'll, I'll, I'll allocate the values. So NP dot, you create zeros of, specify the size, three rows, one column. Okay, there will be a single column and this, this, this is a single matrix, column matrix. First value holds the sum of the first weight, right? Second one for the second, third one for the third. It's a DW. Change in the weights for four times I run one iteration, or oh, sorry, one epoch. Four times I get that DW value. So that should be taken as a sum and saved it here. Okay, so that, that's the purpose why I'm doing this. This is not there in the previous case. Then I need the N value as well. So I know that N equal to four in this case. So everything we have directly, let's jump to the uh, training part. So I can start with the four. So for, this is the same as a previous case, okay? So I in the range, say capital N. So do the same job, like I, I, I keep writing this to see what I'm doing and understand. Uh, previously we have done this, okay? So this is X uh, of I, comma, all the columns, take one by one row from that X, and uh, I also need the D value, right? The desired value from corresponding to this input is what I'm looking for. So this is the D of, uh, I can write I, okay? After that we have, a, a, okay, I will get a V directly by multiplication. So NP dot, NP dot, uh, okay. It's, I think, mat multi. Let me check. Yeah, mat multi. At mul w comma x right i get a partial output v uh, v pass this v through the sigmoid function to get a y y is equal to my sigmoid of this v right i got a y now i need to decide whether i should go for a training i should calculate the change in the weights or not if you do that you can do that by uh, checking this taking a difference, all right? So call it as an error. Error is equal to D minus Y. Okay, that calculates this. Then we do go for the delta. Everything you calculate, but uh, don't update the weight. That's all. Okay. <coughs> so delta is equal to, uh, what should be the delta? It's a phi of V into one minus phi of V, right? So phi of V is Y. Okay, y into, this is 1 minus y, okay, multiply that with the, the error, okay, that's what is a delta value. Using the delta, calculate the dw as well. So keep, keep everything, calculate everything, all right, so dw is equal to, uh, recall the equation, uh, yeah, dw is equal to alpha into delta into x, right, so okay, so that is alpha into uh, delta which is calculated into the x which is the input right now so we have uh, the dw's right i'll try to write the dw uh, sum here I, I have to update the dw sum okay so that is d w sum of the first value it's a zero is equal to or i, I can use the it's equal to here. Okay, so that is whatever DW we calculated. So that is DW of the first value. So DW sum of zero value is equal to DW of first value, whatever we get as a DW in this previous case. Okay, and uh, D, DW sum of one plus equal to DW of one and dw sum of 2 
is equal to dw of so dw sum keep gets uh, happening how many times four times so we have the final dw sums over there i need to take its average correct so let me go for an average here so d dw average you see i am writing this outside the form because once all the four values have been passed to the machine and machine has calculated the dw sum of each of the weights i'll come out of that and i'll do this so dw average is equal to how do you calculate it's a sum dw sum which you have calculated uh, simply divide that by n n is 4 so it will get divided by 4 now you update your weights okay so let's update the weight so that is w is my value so you see w will be uh, w will be actually from this we can see you see w is equal to w is this this one i'm talking about right if i write w of zero right that will access this whole thing because that's the first element inside this list it's a list of list actually it has taken in that way so i should see this and then only i'll, I'll be able to judge what i'm supposed to write a code as so the first element, if you want to update, this is not W of 0, it is W of 0, 0. In 0, you go to the first one. In 0, you go to the second one. That is W of 0, 1. Then this is W of 0, 2. So that's the only way to access that. Because all right, I, we never did anything. We never said anything like specifically I want this format. So because the weights are present in the, the same format, I should update only in that way. There is no uh, shorthand notation for that. So I should write this W of 0, 0, right, equal to, now you see what you want to update. Okay, it's not equal to, it's plus equal, equal to D, uh, I think DW, the average, right, I'll write 0, let's see. I, I'm thinking that this DW average comes in the normal uh, list form. I can access with 0, 1, 2 index values. Okay. If if it throws an error, we'll see what, what's, what should be done at a later stage. Okay. So next is W of 0, comma 1. All right. So this is plus equal to DW average of the next value, then W of 0. And I need two plus equal to D W H of two. Okay, that finishes. Uh, we are still in the inside the function. Okay, I can't return. I can't return. It's a w. All right, so W gets calculated like this, and uh, we will be able to return. Right. Okay, so that's the function for this. And uh, okay, I think I can use a part of this as it is. Okay, so I'll directly till here. I think I I can copy. Okay, that's my main uh, the the testing function as well as the training function. Okay, so till here it is done. Now. What I do, uh, we have the values. Okay, directly go for epoch. All right, so for uh, epoch in range, I'll keep the same number, right? Because maybe I, I will be able to make a comparison. Okay. Sorry. Uh, what I want to do, I want to update the weight. Updated weight W is equal to call the function. I think we gave a name delta batch. So yeah, delta batch of w comma uh, x input d desire. So that happens, and we get the updated weight. So what I do, I'll also print the updated weights over here. Updated weights equal to this. All right, once that is done, I can go for a testing phase, right, uh, wherein I'll, I think I should be able to do the same thing. Okay, n equal to 4, y is there, I pass, uh, I call a loop four times, x will call, okay, uh, there is no desire. 
because whatever you get itself will be compared with the desired. So D is not required, right? Here I need a D. Okay, so let's see whether this is going to run. Okay. Yeah, so clearly there is some difference. Okay, the number of equations same, the number of times uh, what you call, or the alpha value is also same, right? Pretty much everything is same, right? Maybe the initial values of the weights will be different over here, right? That uh, as of now we cannot do anything about it, right? Uh, so, right, we initialize with the random weights, uh, fine. But you see, right, this is the initial uh, weight. This is the updated weight that we can see a change. And also we can see that, right, the values are close enough, but not as close as the SGD 10, right? Because there you were updating for every epoch, uh, sorry, uh, for every instant of train, right? But here you are not doing that, right? So because of that, it's clear from this result, it's, it's not the same result as this. You see here, this was 0 0.0101. So you see here, this is 0 0.02. This is actually not close to zero. You can say it's, there is a slightly more error Right with this, that, that's what is the conclusion we can derive. So, 0 0.008, right? So, this is 0 0.016, almost double, right? The next value 0 0.9932, 0 0.9863, right? So, anyway, in order to make a decision, no problem, right? If you use a r int function or something, np dot r int of this, it will directly give you 0, 0, 0011, 1. absolutely fine, no issues. Okay, so classification happens, everything is fine, right? Then the last number, if you want to compare, this is 0 0.9916. We are comparing that with 0 0.9830, which says that, okay, right? So as of now, what, what we can conclude here is that, uh, right? So weight updation happens, right? Using various schemes possible. The, the third scheme, which is mini batch, again, so you know how to code now. So that part, I'm not going to write a code from scratch in the Okay, that's going to take some time. We'll go further. Okay, during that time we can go and discuss something ahead of that, and that part will be another homework for you. All right. So please take some time to understand that and write a code. Take a mini batch size, fix it. Like in this case, you can take mini batch size as two. All right. And again, that's a suggestion because one is already done, which is the SGD. Uh, four is also done, which is this case. Right. Maybe you can think of. Uh, how to write a code for the mini batch size, you define your own size, all right, and try to uh, write that, okay, so do do that work, right, those who get any doubt in that, I'm there to help, all right, okay, so that comes to the end of uh, today's session, right, and uh, if you have any doubt, you are free to ask. So there is no, no doubt, but like, okay, if we change the range for a epoch, which is like, okay, now we are saying like, okay, 10,000. Yeah. Uh, instead of that, if we do it 20,000, this accuracy might. Yeah. Uh, I'll show you. I'll show you. Since you asked that note, I'll just do that. Right. Slight change is expected. All right. So some change, right? So more learning yeah. is there. You, so the solution is that, okay, if you want to go for uh, this technique, maybe the number of epochs to be increased, right? So that, that's what is the conclusion that we can draw here. Let me show the other value as well. Let's let's go for a bigger number. Let me make it 50,000, all right? Now I'm expecting pretty much closer run. okay? Whatever we got earlier, like 0 0.99, 0 0.99 in the cases, I, I can expect that because you are doing more learning here. It's going to take a uh, little bit more time because maybe four or five seconds, maybe, all right? But you can see, right? That's what I'm expecting. Uh, answer coming closer to that. Yes, you see, 0 0.009, 0 0.007, 0 0.9939, 0 0.9925. Yes, so you can do a, you can derive a lot of conclusions from this. Right? Yeah, thank you. Sir. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Any other doubt? Anything to discuss? Uh, sir, uh, we are giving input row wise or column wise here? Uh, X. Rows, rows. You see? This, row wise. So here this... are the four rows. Yes. Yes. And That's... the weights are three. So we have skipped one a row or what? No, no, no. You see, every row has three elements, right? I'm yes. taking a row, but when it goes into the machine, it becomes like this. You see, 0, 0, 1, 3 weights. 3 weights only? 3 weights, right? Because my each row, okay. inside the row, I have 3 elements, right? 
okay i'm passing the row at a time but row will not go like this row will go like this right because 0 0 1 will go into this i have w1 w2 the three weights corresponding to three inputs so so in okay. this okay so in confused. this case yeah, yeah, yeah. Please hold on. Yeah, so, I'll just answer. No, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was just. He's asking about this question. Same thing. Right? Okay. Yeah. Please go ahead. Nidhi. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So what I I was saying, uh, this basically weights are equal to the like okay number of weights are equal to the number of uh, x x columns. X values, right? Correct columns. Uh -huh. You, you columns. see this one, this one, right? Yeah. So zero is x one. Next to zero is x two. One is x three. Corresponding to these three points, I have W1, W2, W3. Three weights. Is, is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Please go ahead. Any other question? Okay, so uh, we have come to the end of uh, today's session and uh, tomorrow's session will begin from here. Uh, I'll try to write a code which uh, gives you a clear cut idea that how much error is present uh, per epoch whenever we go through epochs, how much error is present when you use SGD and when you use batch, right? We'll try to write a hybrid code which uses both of them together and we'll, we'll try to visualize. It, okay, so that, that gives you more idea about which one is better here. Okay, for a given number of epochs, right, which one I should choose, right, that gives you an idea about that. Then tomorrow we have uh, many other important topics to learn like this. From scratch only we'll do that, we'll even study the back propagation, how the error is propagating back, we'll visualize that, what are the problems associated with them and how to overcome them, right. Major issues will be discussed there. Again, I'll try to teach in, in the scratch level only, not using the built-in part. Okay, so once we are comfortable with all these concepts, definitely we can go ahead and use the, uh, the built-in functions at a later stage. All right.